folks, so I've been getting a number of requests to do a tutorial on how to open and close doors in VR. While it's not part of my plugin, I kind of wanted to field test the new Knuckles Live Link um, plugin that I've been working on in the background, so I thought I might as well use it for this project. So as you can see here, I've been able to um, translate or retarget the uh, hand skeletal animation that came from that's coming from the SteamVR API onto a centered hand skeleton from uh, Unreal. But yeah, the main purpose of this tutorial is of course to show you this mechanic where we can open and close doors in VR. So let's get started. Um, we'll start with a frame. I'll add that frame into the scene here. And let's create a blueprint out of this one. Ready, create blueprint. Okay, so let's just have a better look at this. So we probably want the door with that frame. So let's add a static mesh component. And just look at the starter. So I've got the starter content here on this project. So I'm just gonna add door. So can I align that there? All right, so let's look at a yaw and see how we're going to be opening and closing the stores. So you can see we have 90 towards opening and negative 90 towards, yeah, while well, opening it um, inwards. So first, um, I'd like to do this by iteration. So oh, or as with most VR mechanics that I do, I'd like to do it in um, iterations. So let's start by trying to actually move that frame um, by increasing its yaw. All right, so I'm just gonna add the relative rotation here. And let's add a step. So the step variable is gonna be the one, um, kind of like the speed by which we're gonna be opening and closing the door just so that it can be easily changed by a level designer. I'm just going to expose that and compile, save. All right. So you can see here how I've just exposed that out there in the scene uh, as a public variable, so you can change things on the scene. And we can see that it's working. Although not as well as we want to, so let's add a max yaw because we don't want that to be flipping right through. Um, what did we do? Yeah, 90 was the min max. So we want this door to um, open and close um, with a min max value of 90. So let's do a test before actually adding that relative rotation. I'm just gonna get this um, step here, add it to the current relative yaw, and let's test that against the max yaw. So if that is greater than the max yaw, that. Or if it's less than as well, negative 90. We're just, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're just going to multiply the max yaw to negative 1, so we get a negative 90. So we've got now this two booleans here. So if either of this um, is true, we're not going to want to um, add that relative rotation. Right, let's move this a little bit further. All right, so I'm just going to want to clean up a little bit here. Okay, it's, still, it's a bit messy, but let's give it a go. And that should open up to max, uh, no, uh, all right, yep, got it. 
got the logic wrong there. So if it's not greater than or less than, it should move and stop when it's reached a min-max, y'all. All right, so we've got the core mechanic and we can build on top of this. First, I'd like to do is, oops, uh, just cut that. So I've just cut all of those nodes and I want to create a function here just so that it's not too messy. I can move it around easily, that core mechanic. So open, close door. And I'm just going to paste all of those nodes back in. And just move that here. Put it in the branch. Compile. Go back to event graph and just drag along the new function here. And give it another test just to be sure. All right, so we've got a clean function and a, well, a clean graph with the core mechanic, which is opening and closing a door. All right, so we'd probably want. All right, so next we'd like to probably check if there is an actual hand on in the vicinity of the doorknob before we actually open the door. So I'm just adding a sphere collision here. I will just change that. It's a bit too big. Maybe 10% is the starting point. Move it a bit around. All right, um, just press F here. Okay, just align it a little bit. Can't see it properly. All right, yep. Yep, there you go. So that's looking good. So now we have a sphere collision for testing if there's a hand on the doorknob. So let's test begin overlap and actually check the overlapping um, component um, with the sphere um, against the tag that I've preset before for the um, other door for the demo. So I've added a tag called hand R for the right hand. And we're going to test that now. All right. So if that is the correct hand touching the doorknob, we'd want to keep a reference of the of that um, particular hand and so that we can refer to it later in the event tick um, and make sure that the door moves whenever um, a hand is actually in the doorknob. So I'm just going to use a primitive object reference, which is the um, variable that the event um, begin overlap actually spits out. All right, so I'm just going to set the hand. Um, what am I? Huh, what am I doing? Sorry. Just set hand there. there. And yep. True. Get the other component. Attach it there. Remove it that one and yep so that looks good um tidy up a little bit i guess all right yep. okay now i'm gonna want to um, do kind of the same thing when the hand leaves the sphere so we're just going to copy all these nodes from begin overlap. All right. So just test if a hand has left the um, sphere and just setting that hand variable to null. All right. So we can do a quick test. Okay, so we'd want that to only run when there is an actual hand in the doorknob. So let's get that variable there and just check if it's valid. The branch, the, and move this along. Move that there. Move this a bit up. All right, I'm just chugging along here. It's double checking. Branch, if it's true, then we want to move the door. All right.
Alright, I think that's pretty much it. On begin overlap, we set a hand, and overlap, we remove the hand variable, and then if there's a hand variable, we actually move the door or open the door. Let's start. Alright, so this is how it looks like now. So we've got the core stuff working. All right, let me just show you quickly what I've done in the Runeberg VR pawn. So I've got a motion controller, left and right triggers. I'm just setting a Boolean field describing left or right, true or false. And you can see the hand meshes. I have a tag there, hand left and hand right. And just to make the pawn um, collision work properly, I've just set up a static mesh on the pawn itself. But in rendering, I've just set that to invisible so we don't actually see it. All right, so we now want to kind of read that is grabbing right as well from the pawn that I just showed you. So we're going to get the owner of the hand mesh, which should be VR pawn base one. Yep. And if the if there is a VR pawn base, it's the owner of that hand. What we'd want to do is check if the pawn is actually grabbing or not. That means in this case that the player has actually pressed the um, trigger. So. Just gonna check that is grabbing all right. Then yeah, if it's set to true, then true. All right. So now not only are we checking if there's a hand in the doorknob, we're actually checking if that hand is actually grabbing or in a grabbing motion. Next, we'll want to actually check if the player's hand is moving forward or backwards. So we will know or, um, how to actually move the door whether we're moving it forward or backwards so um, what I'm gonna do now is just quickly create two new variables um, just to check um, just to put where the players um, current frames transform is and the previous frames transform and from these variables we can do a classic um, classic game programming math where we're going to check whether the current frame is actually in front uh, the current frame position is actually in front of the previous frame position all right so let's uh, let me just clean up a little bit here before I get to the math part otherwise this can get a bit messy so just double checking, I'm gonna stretch that out a bit because I'm gonna use I'm gonna start producing a bit more logic in there. So we're getting to the heart of the well part of the core mechanic. So the main core mechanic is actually opening and closing the door. And a lot of these things that we're just doing is just to make sure that the mechanic feels and works right. So yeah, so let me just do some stuff here. All right, so I've just cleaned up a little bit, and now I'm going to use those or set those variables that we've created earlier. Okay, so I've got the is set set. All right, so we'll set the previous frame transform to the current game transform and the hand current to the current. All right, so once we've set the variables, we now want to do the test. All right, so from the current um, transform, we're going to get the location deduct that with the previous frames location um, we'll get the forward vector of the previews and normalize the um, subtraction there do a dot product and if
if this is for is greater than zero, that means it's moving forward. Yep, so I'm probably doing this a bit fa too fast, but okay. Um, all right, so let me just double check. All right, yep, yeah, so that looks good. Um, let's do an absolute on the step just in case and multiply it to negative one so that it moves the yaw. It adds a negative yaw, which is, as we've seen earlier, it actually moves it, the door, uh, opens the door forward. Okay, so we attach that and then just do a check. Sorry, set the step. Okay, and yeah, copy that. All right, so, and just use a normal one for moving the door forward. Okay, so that's the equation there. We just add that to the logic there. Okay, so we're almost there. All right, so this looks a little bit better now. Um, yeah, so check if there is yeah, moving forward or backwards. Then we'd want to move the player. All right, so let's give this paper a whirl. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for this core mechanic. And we've now done a open door and uh, open and closed door uh, mechanic in VR, so it's pretty simple. Um, you'd probably want to do a bit more polish, just play test it, um, check for angles, ignore angles where the player is coming from, um, to open and close the door just to make it feel natural. And yeah, play around with the collisions a bit. Um, yeah, and that should be how to do a VR mechanic um, and also kind of to field test the new Knuckles Live Link um, plugin that I've been working on. All right. Thanks, folks, and I'll see you in the next video.